for a while, since I was about eight, and I've also done cosplay for about ten years now. And so I'm going to talk to you guys about being in character for cosplay. I just have to get my laptop ready, one second. Okay. Um, first thing I want to point out to you guys is, uh, well, first thing I want to ask you guys a question. Why do you cosplay? Because it's awesome. Okay. I like the dressing up and acting. Okay. Mostly the acting. How many of you how many of you cosplay because you want to be the character? Cool. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna point out, and it's kind of the first thing you have to accept is that you are in real life you're not the character and you never will be. Oh I know, I know, I know. As soon as you accept that fact, you will actually become more in character. Just bear with me for a minute. Let me explain to you why, okay? <laughs> when I find it on my laptop. Okay. Before you get familiar with your character, this, this should happen somewhere after you have watched the entire series upwards of, what, five to two hundred times? Whatever anime it is, or whatever whatever movie it is, or whatever book it is, in that case, read it. Um, but, so it's, it takes place after that, but before you have, say, a script for a skit, or before you decide what you're going to do in the hallway as your character. So after your character is already researched, but before you present it to an audience, um, you need to get comfortable with yourself and the way that you react to situations. In acting, we call that uh, tapping into our emotion bank. By tapping into your emotion bank, you get familiar with how you feel when you're happy. You know, like when I'm happy, I kind of arch back and I'm like, yeah, I'm having a good day. Get kind of like that, and then when I'm kind of feeling bad, I kind of drop my shoulders. Sometimes you might pull an Edward Cullen and look off into the distance, <laughs> and you're just kind of downcast. And see how, notice how my posture, uh, my tone of voice, my pacing, all of those things change. To be believable as a character responding to that situation, whether it's what somebody said to you in a hallway or a photo op, or what line you've read in a script, you have to tap into your own emotions first. Otherwise, it's not believable. True, Jack Sparrow and I are not the same person. We talk two different ways. However, Jack Sparrow still feels happiness, sadness, anger, frustration, anxiety, and so do I. So, you know, if he's kind of in a good mood, he's going to walk around. <laughs> He's going to kind of size people up maybe a little bit. But, you know, say Elizabeth chose Will instead, God forbid. Well, then he's going to get kind of sad. <sighs> and so, it's, yeah, it's the character. I've got the voice down and all of that. However, if you notice, the happiness and the sadness were the same as when it was me. And that's how you make it believable. So that's uh, emotion making, and a, a good way to practice it is to just sit in front of the mirror and think of a time when, like, you know, your brother kicked your puppy and you're really <laughs> upset, and you kind of focus on that. And you know, um, every experience is a good experience for acting, even when Grandma gets run over by a reindeer. Yeah. It's good for acting. It's not good in real life, but keep it and go. That's good for my emotion bank. I have a journal at home, and I'll write down when something really cool happens and when something really terrible happens, and then go back and look at it, and I can use that emotion 
for acting. And then you just you look in front of the mirror and read read what's on your journal. Read about you know the time you won the lottery and how happy you were. And then read, read about how sad you were when the IRS realized that you weren't paying taxes for the past ten years and took it all anyway. You know. And uh, read that out loud while looking at the mirror, and you'll notice even just reading it out loud, your tone changes, your posture changes, and those emotions come back up. And then keep them in your back pocket. Because then, even random things like, like not necessarily reading lines on a skit, very good, very good, very in character. Um, but also, somebody comes up for a photo op and, and wants you to react as a character. You know, they go up to Sasuke and go, you know, I just saw Itachi over there. Where? You know, get super pissed off, you know. And, um, but you can't just sound like Sasuke or, you know, you know Sasuke's mad. You have to tap into your own emotion and remember a time when you were mad. Otherwise, it's not believable. So, there's that. Now, I need two volunteers. Hey, you guys, perfect, Yo. right here, right here. Just volunteer. I don't know. <laughs> You're going to do some acting right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all right. So this is a line, even though it's actually a case with a Harry Potter wand in it, but we'll break that like it's a line. This side of the line is happiness. That sign of line is sadness. Each of you is going to have a word that you're going to say in that emotion. Your word is going to be pancakes. pancakes. Your word is going to be enchilada. <laughs> I want, um, if you want to come up here, and you can take the mic. Yeah, I'm good. I can, okay, I can scream. Cool. Awesome. On this side of the line, I want you to say pancakes, and then when I say go, Cross the line and say it again. This side is happiness. So pancakes. And then, however, but don't do it like right. me. Do it your way. And then oh, pan pancakes. <laughs> okay. Go right ahead. Pancakes. Okay. Now come back and do it faster. Pancakes. Same thing, only with enchiladas. Okay. So this is the happy enchilada. This is the sad. So this is the enchilada today, and this is the enchilada a week later, but you forgot it was that old. <laughs> or even worse, your roommate ate the enchilada. So now you have the enchilada over there. The roommate ate it. Whatever. Happy, sad. Go ahead. Enchilada. Enchilada. I'll do it super fast between the two. Enchilada. There's a lot of... <laughs> Sweet, and so that's just the basic idea of inflection and tone. It's the same word, the same scenario, only ones you're happy and ones you're sad. Did you guys tap into anything at all in terms of the last time you felt sad or happy? Did it make it easier for you? Sweet, perfect, all right. Cool. Okay, another important thing, this is probably more for the stage and not necessarily for hallway, um, because I, I believe that, that uh, hallway and stage cosplay are almost two separate cosplays. So can I get two more volunteers? Okay, you, and right here. Okay, this one is entrusting your actor. I'll catch you. Yep. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are already familiar with that one. <laughs> no, you're in your seat. I think you want to pick something else for you to do in a minute. <laughs> All right. I don't trust the style of acting that I'm most familiar with is called method acting. I don't know how many of you are familiar with that. But method acting is basically psyching yourself out to the point where you will not freeze up and mess up on stage. 
Um, how many of you get stage fright? How many of you would like to never feel stage fright on stage ever again? But it gives you energy. Yeah. Nervous energy. So in method acting, we have something that's called the house of method. The house of method is basically what you protect yourself from screwing up on stage. You get in your shelter, which is the house of method. The foundation for the house of method is called relaxation. Um, everything else in, involved with method acting and doing it correctly revolves around being relaxed on stage. If you're not relaxed, you can't be believable, you can't remember your lines, you can't remember your cues, and in the worst case scenario, you might have to run to the bathroom and throw up. So, um, basically, tension is the opposite of relaxation, and tension is the, the worst thing that can happen to an actor on stage. Um, there was a famous director named Stanislavski, I don't know if any of you guys have heard of him or not, he's been dead for a long time but uh, well he's really I mean it's several hundred years but his whole thing was that uh, tension is the occupational disease of an actor um, and it's also the actor's greatest enemy so the way that we get rid of tension is uh, can you tell that this is the first time I've looked at this part of my class today <laughs> Okay. Now, now it's time for you. This will be cool. You'll have fun. <laughs> Not gonna be carried off into the sunset. All right. Wait, um, can you can, can he borrow that chair for me? I'll carry you back to your seat if you want. I'll carry you. No. <laughs> I'll, I'll carry you. Oh. I'll just be like chauffeur security. I want right. you to sit down in that chair. That's what I do, yo. That works however you want. Now I want you to sit down in the chair in which, if you had to, you could fall asleep. Without falling off the chair. Very nice. I, I, I would have a migraine. But see, right now you're actually off the chair because your arms are hitting the ground. And so is your head. Can you fall asleep like that? <laughs> He's trying really hard. <laughs> now, after you find the position, so go ahead and go back the way you were, where you were laying down, upside down. I like that one a lot. It all happened on my 12th birthday. Now, the doctor touched me. <laughs> now we're going to do something called exploring tension. That's one way to do it. Another way is I want you to raise your arm up as high as you can. Do you feel do you feel the tension in your arm? Do you feel tension in your neck right now? So you feel all this tension, right? Okay. Yeah? Arm up or arm down? Or whatever you want to do. Just I want you to explore yourself in space right now and just kind of feel the effects of the gravity. I've never seen someone do this exercise upside down before, so it's really entertaining. Um, oh, wow, that's a great workout. Now I want you to do something. Go ahead and sit normally. Good job. Raise one arm up. And I want you to tell me, where do you feel tension? Just start moving your wrist, start moving your fingers. Do you feel anything? Not yet. Okay, now relax the rest of your body as though you're asleep. Except that arm. Don't worry guys, I'm not, this isn't like a weird cult thing, this really is something that helps. <laughs> now I want you to just go ahead and move each, like move one arm at a time and move even your ankles and your toes and ask yourself, where is the tension in your body? Just one at a time though. Where is the tension in your body? Kind of towards um, about the hips, you know, and stomach area. Towards okay. Stomach. Now that you've identified the tension, um, it's all you got to do now is let go. Everything. Just let go of the tension you feel in your body. Just let it go. Now, how do you feel in front of all these people? Now that you've let go of all that tension. I feel like the camera from my foot. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel more or less stressed than you did at first when you were here upside down? 
I, I, I gotta say no, no, less. Less, yeah. And sometimes you have to go through all of this just to find where the tension is. Um, stress, as you know, has a physical effect on our bodies. So sometimes before, like before you do your skit or before, even before you um, go to the convention, if you're able, I've gone to uh, the um, Holiday Inn several times in the past before convention just gone in there in the empty hallways it's kind of weird and creepy but I've gone in there and just sat there and done this exercise and just get the idea of this is where my audience is going to be so I've gone to the Civic Center and done the same thing now no 100 people don't go to the Civic Center and do this or they're gonna yell at Borneo but just the idea that and then remove the tension in your body by spinning around and just kind of focus on the idea of being relaxed in this space what you're doing here is you're now creating the foundation in the house of method. Most of us will get in, uh, acclimated to our, our environment. In traditional acting, you would do this on the stage. Or if you were doing a film project, you would do this on the set. You just take a chair and just sit there and find where the tension's in your body and relax. And then once the show begins, whether it's off camera or backstage or in the bathroom before you come out to the hall to do photo ops, Focus on it again. Obviously, you're not going to be sitting on a chair in the bathroom, but you're you're just going to kind of no, just take a minute. It's almost like a meditative thing, mm -hmm. and just relax yeah, your body. The and then you'll know right. that you're now ready to go out and face your audience without feeling so nervous. Okay. Well, thank you. Give them a round of applause, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Really do. Now I have to find the next chapter. <laughs> Do you want to find it for me? So a lot of my, uh, a lot of directors have told me that all actors experience butterflies when they get in front of an audience. The key is learning to train your butterflies to fly in formation. <laughs> and that's really the, the idea behind all of these techniques. Uh, the next one is called sense memory for action for actors. Um, if relaxation is a foundation upon which rests the house of method. Sense memory is the structure of the house, or like the skeleton, you know, the framework. Uh, without it, the house is a transparent frame sitting on a solid foundation, so you have nothing there. So all of your walls and all of that is this, is uh, sense memory. Sense memory is remembering the, by the five senses of sensory impressions experienced by the individual or organism in everyday life. And I'm sure right now you're wondering, how does that, what the heck does that have to do with being in cosplay? And I'll tell you. Um, Harley Quinn's at the convention, okay? You need to ask yourself, number one, what is she doing there? Playing bombs for Mr. J. Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah, that's perfect. And you know what's funny is when I, when I get in character for the Joker, I'm like, okay, now we have a whole bunch of really weird people here, and they don't have any idea what I'm going to do. No one would suspect the real Joker to be here and blow things up. No, they're just going to think I'm a fan. This is perfect. No, and then Batman comes and ruins my day. But in any case, it's really important to think, what am I doing here? If you're on the stage, it's a little bit easier because you have a script that says, you know, Carl walked into the house. He could tell that Bertha had been cheating. Okay, well then you can think, okay, Carl's a plumber. Because guy's named Carl. I hope, is anyone here named Carl? I don't want to insult anyone. Your name Carl? Okay, okay, no. Ugh. In any case, uh, the idea that, uh, you know, Carl's a plumber, he walks home, and uh, Bertha's cheating on him. Well, it's like, okay, why is Bertha cheating on him? Well, Carl isn't making enough money and is never home. And I based all that off of just that sentence. So, sense memory is basically getting the idea of what is your actor doing there? Where did they come from? What are they seeing, smelling, hearing? The idea is basically how are the five senses reacting to your character, whether it's on stage or in the hallway or whatever. So does anybody have any questions about sense memory? It's pretty basic. Just, it's basically like when you play pretend in, in the uh, playground only it's acting and we're not getting committed for schizophrenia so, yeah next one
Key real emotions, we already talked about that. Okay, right there. Stop. All right, can I get another volunteer, please? All right. I need another chair. Or if you want to get a different chair for Vector. There's a lot of chair exercises with this. Because I like sitting, because I'm lazy. So, we talked about relaxation. So go ahead and, and do the same relaxed state that he was doing. Don't worry about tension or anything like that. Just, just relax. Just totally, if you could fall asleep right now, that's good. Just kind of relax your body. Okay, now, I want you to start with a sense of sight um, because it's probably one of our strongest senses that we have. I want you to imagine that you're holding a cup and you can, you're not asleep now. So that was just to get you relaxed in front of everybody. You're holding a cup. What color is it? Yeah, kind of like a, one of those red Dixie cups. Okay, what's in the cup? Water. Okay, go ahead and take a sip of the water. How does it taste? Like tap. <laughs> Where did you get the cup of water? Oh, good. What are you going to do with it when you're done? Okay. All right. She says throw it in a trash can or get a refill, which is always good options when you have a cup of water. Okay. Cool. Well, thank you. So that was basic, a basic sense memory thing. She came up on stage and she focused on the character holding a cup. She could have just, you know, I don't know, it's just a cup here in my hand, but it's not really a cup, it's just my hand. But the idea is to focus on what the cup is, what's containing in the cup, and all of that. And um, basically, again, that's what you do with sense memory on stage. The idea behind it is to get your character so into the moment and so into their environment that they have no idea that you're actually an awkward actor on stage talking to a French bunch of people and they're all worried about you. Yeah, French too, some of them. So, all right. The next one's going to be concentration for actors. All right, and this is called, this is the instant remedy for stage fright. How many of you guys like to hear that? How many want, How many of you guys want a magic instant remedy for stage fright? You can go at it. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Okay. It should be called audience fright because that's really what it is. Like right now, honestly, I'm really actually quite terrified of all of you. I don't know why. You're not zombies yet or anything. Yeah, well, something weird happened in Haiti a couple weeks ago, so... See, in order to have stage fright, you have to become aware of the audience in the first place. I mean, when you're on stage and you get nervous, I'm sure that what you're thinking is, oh my god, I'm on stage in front of people and I'm really nervous, right? That's what you're thinking the whole time. The idea is not allowing yourself to become aware of the audience in the first place. So don't even acknowledge them. Uh, that means concentrating on a specific object. If you're concentrated fully on a specific object, it is impossible to be concentrating on the audience. Uh, think about for a minute a cat playing with a ball of string or a ball of yarn on the ground. The cat's body is relaxed except for its paw or whatever it needs to destroy the string as it wanders through the jungle attacking its prey, right? And it's playing. Suddenly, a dog walks in the room. The cat immediately gets up, and instead of its focus being on the ball of string and its muscles and things moving with the ball of string, its job then is to try to get the dog to back up. You know, they arse their back, they poof up, and they only use the muscles necessary to get the dog to be afraid. Likewise, the dog has entered the room to eat a bowl of food. So the dog is concentrating on the bowl of food and does everything it can to, to eat the bowl of food, and suddenly it notices the cat. Right? And now the dog's job is, you know, it wants to eat the cat instead of the bowl of food. <laughs> and so they've both completely forgotten about the ball of string and the bowl of food. So I want you guys to think about your audience as a ball of string or a bowl of food in that sense. You know, if that makes any sense at all. 
You distract yourself with something else so that you don't have time or in the attention span, and if you're like me, this is really good because I have ADD, to focus on something else other than getting nervous about the audience. So you basically psych yourself out. The next section is called the magic if for actors. So we have a basic understanding of relaxation, sense, memory, and concentration. Now say you, you, if it's a skit, you would pick up your script, read it once, form a certain idea of it, read it again, and clarify more for yourself. Then you ask yourself, where do I start with this? The same is true with uh, hallway acting. You know, you go, kind of go in there thinking, I want to be in character and inter interact with people in the hallways and, and do cool poses for photo ops and all of that. But where do I start? You know, what what exactly am I going to do? How exactly am I going to interact? And worst of all, keep it appropriate if you play the Joker or something like that. <laughs> and so, basically the magic if uh, starts with you asking yourself, what would you do if you were in those circumstances? And that's your base point to then transition into what your character would do. 98% of the characters that I like to do have, are nothing like me at all, and that's part of the fun. And so, basing myself off what I would do is a good starting point so I can contrast that. Obviously, I'm not going to come in here and cut a smile on somebody's face, but the Joker certainly would. So, you need to realize that you're actually living a fictional life when you're playing your character, and you're a figment of the creator's imagination. When you're playing a character, like in cosplay, in my mind, you're, you're living that character vicariously through you of what the author or creator or manga artist had intended, if you want the character to be accurate. Uh, and, you know, your sets and your props are actually, real, are actually props. They're not real trees, real windows. Vash doesn't have a real gun, Aww. hopefully. <laughs> you know, and all of this, but he reacts like he does have a real gun. So, it's your job to make the props and things real to you. Otherwise, they're not going to look real to the audience. If you're aware that Vash's gun is a piece of plastic and you treat it like a piece of plastic, guess what? Everybody in the audience is going to be like, oh, that's a nice piece of plastic that's shaped like a gun. But if you take the time to practice spinning it around and things and putting it in your holster, taking it out of your holster, undoing it, reloading it, and all that stuff, even if you can't reload it, but you do the movements of that, you know, watch videos of guys that actually know how to do that. Watch like Sons of Guns or something and, and learn how to do all that stuff. Then when you're doing that, just if you're just walking around doing that, the audience can go, holy crap, that guy can move just like Vash. You know, or that guy can move just like Mugen, or that guy can move just like Axel. You have to believe that your props are real in order for them to look real to everybody else. And it's also another good way to concentrate on them instead of your audience. Do, 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 do. Okay, now we're going to talk about objects for actors. Uh, object and the resulting concentration from attention to it is a basic building block from which the actor works. By concentrating on an object, the actor establishes a sense of belief and faith, becoming involved in what he is doing. This in turn leads to unconscious experience and behavior. Now, the object can be something that's on an endless list. What your object has to be it can be anything. It can be imaginary, it can be physical or fantasy. It doesn't really make any difference at all. Uh, it can be a remembered sensory object, such as heat, cold, pain, or a particular sound. Or it can be relationships, like past, present, or hoped for. Um, a really good example of that is I was uh, in the play Dracula, and I forgot, I don't even remember the character's name anymore, but it's the guy that Keanu Reeves plays in the movie. That guy? No, uh, no, it's uh, the kind of useless guy whose girlfriend gets kidnapped and anybody doesn't really do anything. 
Anyway, John Harker, that's his name. Anyway, I had a really hard time because I had this kissing scene with this girl and she smelled like onions and, eh, you know. Um, so what I had to do as a sensory object is I had to, like when I would look in her eyes and, uh, and it's like, you don't want to think, oh, well, this actor who smells like onions, I don't want to kiss them because then what happens is you tense up, suddenly you realize the audience is there and they're going to be like, man, that kiss just looked horrible. You know, so what I had to do is I had to to uh, imagine that it was Brit and her face instead of this other person. And what was funny is during rehearsals, Brit came to rehearsal and she got really jealous because she thought, what the heck, you know, he's kissing this girl and stuff. And then I told her, don't worry, you know, I'm picturing you, not her. And it's the way that you make it, that situation uh, realistic. Otherwise, it's just awkward. You don't eat onions for a while. Because... So... That's one way to do objects. Uh, another way is I have here several items. These are physical objects. These help me transition between characters. It's kind of weird. It's almost like the characters are possessing each object. There should be a, a knife in there, too. Yep. Hope so. There it is. There's another whose line is it anyway? Yeah, improv, like whose line and things like that are fantastic for getting into character. So, here we have, and I'll have to take it out of the box. A, well, the elder one, anyway. Not, no big deal, just the elder one. You know. Some kid threw it in a canyon and I had to tape it back together, I don't know. Uh, this is Hagakure, the book of the samurai, which is just basically all of their beliefs. Jack Sparrow's nine piece of eight. And a butterfly knife, which I'm not going to take out, but it's there. <laughs> so these are all different characters and when I pick one up, I kind of think how the character would react to you see, we must train the boy. We must get him ready. And so now we're prepared. Bring Harry Potter to me. Yeah, I wasn't Dumbledore, was I? <laughs> then, now we have Hogokoi. And we get very serious. Hi! I'll touch you while you. And of course, we've got nine pieces of eight here. I thought I got rid of that thing. <laughs> My favorite of all is the knife. Come here. It's okay. With the knife, you can just stick it right here. That, you want to know how I got the scars? Well, Mr. J, I already know how you got the scars. But you need more! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and so these are great because this is good to just suddenly transition between the characters. Um, method acting is very, very in-depth. When I did play the Joker, I really had a hard time because it did. I mean, I stopped sleeping for a while. It's really easy to get too attached. And that can be kind of scary. So always have a base point to you know be really aware of who you are, so you can go back and forth between the character and yourself and, and not lose sleep because it gets kind of old taking melatonin all the time. So that's objects for actors. This goes really in depth. I'm not going to go really in depth, but I will give you guys the website for method acting. Am I out of time? Okay. All right. Um, that's pretty much it anyway. Uh, does anybody have any questions about acting and cosplay? I know I didn't specifically say uh, something like, to be Naruto, you have to do this. Because really, figuring that out is up to you. You have to you know, watch the series. Think about what you would do in a situation and then apply what would Naruto do in the situation. So that, that sort of research is really something you have to do on your own. Do I think that you have to have a costume to be in character? No, you don't. Uh, it's more important to be in the character. Uh, 
to be believable, otherwise you're just another person in a costume. So, yeah, you had one question? Somebody said you shouldn't be yourself when in a cosplay, but you figured out that's the best thing to do. Yeah, I agree. Um, the reason I agree is because if you're always trying to just mimic someone else, it's going to come across like you're mimicking somebody else. But if you act genuine, if you tap into kind of like those memory banks and those emotional banks like I was telling you about, and then simply interpret them as the character, it's going to come across as genuine. So like I said, you're never going to be the character, but you can certainly put on a pretty good illusion of that. Any more questions? The web page? You said oh yeah, the websites. Are they up here? There it is. Okay. Uh, it's on theatergroup.com. Do you have a pen on you? Because the, the theater is spelled without an E. I don't know why. I probably had to share the same website as a porn website or something. So they change it to theater. So it's T H E A T R group.com. And then there's just a section in there called method acting. And when you click on it, there's about a million tabs that have different forms of method acting. And that's just a really good one. They have a book too you can buy. So, any other questions? All right, thank you very much for your time.